Yes, man in your corner. That is something you do not need. Oh, good. Good. Yours. Huh? Huh? Ba, 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 ba. Ah! Oh, all right. Outstanding. Outstanding. Coach Greg in today's video, highly requested. Everyone says, Coach Greg, you gotta check out KSI. He has no idea how he's lifting. His form, it's horrible. The guy, he likes to box, and he does in fact have an amazing physique. He's got a full, defined six pack, plenty of muscle, and I do believe the guy is 100% natural. But does he have a clue how to work out? Does he know what he's doing? Or is it all genetics? And today we're gonna find out how strong your boy really is. And the first thing you need to understand is this is not a fitness trainer. He doesn't have a personal training certificate. He hasn't gone to university. He's not a kinesiologist. And he's taking a chance. He's saying, look, this is how I work out. I normally do a little warm up, about 100 calories on here. And so he starts off his workout by burning approximately 100 calories, of which it takes him about seven minutes. And so to me, that is amazing. He doesn't skip the workout and he has a specific calorie goal in mind. Many people will skip out on the warm up, but the warm up is important. If you're trying to prevent injuries, you really want your body to get warm. All the muscles are getting worked out. And so if he's going slower on one day, might have to go eight minutes. If you're going faster, it might take him only six minutes. And just to ensure that he really is warmed up, he's not done yet. He does overhead squats with very light weights, tapering up to 45 kilograms, which is just around 100 pounds. And many of you are going to be thinking, well, he's not squatting low enough. Do you really think you need to squat below parallel every time you do a squat? What do you believe his goals are? Remember, he's training for boxing. He's not trained to get huge quads and glutes. And so I see nothing wrong with doing overhead half squats as part of his warm up. He's not pushing the envelope. He's not eagle lifting. And notice he began with very light weight and slowly tapered up. This is his warm up and how you choose to warm up to me, that is up to you. All right, these are front squats. And he chooses this as he's trying to develop more of his core. Front squats are a great movement, but for most people, very difficult to do. And so if your goal is simply muscle hypertrophy, you're going in the gym to build an aesthetic physique, it's likely not the best exercise choice for you. But remember, he's a boxer trying to have a tight core and he doesn't really care about having massive quads. What they're working more is on explosive strength and power and not having a full range of motion throughout the movement. And so although many people are going to be critical saying, how in the heck are you squatting that? Those are half squats, quarter squats. Does he really need to squat to parallel in order to be a great boxer? The answer is no. How often during a boxing event are you halfway down? Only if you're getting knocked out do you ever go halfway down and so to squat that low it wouldn't be of much benefit. In using the principle of specificity your movements should resemble those of the actual competition and so in a boxing match you're typically not squatting or bending the legs more than about quarter of the way down. And so does it make sense for him to do full squats? No. Jesus, <laughs> I'm strong, you know. Dylan's wrecked, <laughs> he's getting destroyed. Now, although he does have the energy of Jesse James West, the guy's amped up, he's not practicing safe sets. After all, where are the callers? And when's the last time you saw a guy doing front squats with one person on each side of the bar with their hands right there? Why doesn't the guy have collars on the bar? And why are there no safety bars on the side of the squat? If you can't get the lift, the safety bars are there for a reason. You drop the weight on the safety bars and you walk away. Rather than needing two spotters on either side of the bar with their hands clasped around that bar, what is the point of that? Oftentimes what will happen with a spotter on either side of the bar is if something does go wrong, say he hurts his back, trips or whatever, one person grabs the bar before the other, the bar goes sideways and you're tweaking your lower back. It's not a great way to spot. The way to spot this is not with a person on either side, better off with callers having a safety bars on the rack and having one spotter from behind just in case. Yes, uh, ooh, it's okay. And so unfortunately, 140 kilograms, we do not see his knees. We do not see how low the bar is going. And as you know, you do not need to break parallel during a front squat, especially for a boxer. But half squat, that seems to make sense. But as he's going heavier, he seems to be cutting his reps a little bit shy not going as deep on the heavier reps. And why is that? Well, because he's ego lifting. Oh, I did this with Ethan, and Ethan was better than me at this. Not anymore, fam. <laughs> he just said it. Ethan used to be stronger than me, but not now. 
Now I can beat him. Now I'm better. I'm stronger. And so why? Because he's progressive overloading, but cheating the reps. He's letting his ego dictate the weight. And so I don't believe his form is as good as it could be. Oh, good. 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 Huh? Oh, right. Outstanding. Yeah, let's squat down, twist side to side, hover our way up, not go low enough. Outstanding. Amazing. Yes, man in your corner, that is something you do not need. You don't need people telling you what you want to hear. You need people telling you what you need to hear. That was not a really good squat. It was too heavy, wasn't low enough, form was not bang on. And that is a recipe for an injury. And so I don't see the benefit of a boxer attempting one rep maximums in particular if they're doing quarter reps with the potential of getting hurt. And what's he got tucked under the shirt? And so is he in fact a power lifter? After all, I just watched him lift the one rep max on the squat and now he's doing partials on the bench press. Three, two, one, up. <clears throat> That's your bar, down, work. Fucking hell. Yeah, Easy, guys. Is. And on that day, not a single rep on the bench press was done. First things first. When somebody is holding the bar from start to finish, you did not lift the weight. You together lifted the weight. It was a team event. And so you just said a tandem one rep max on the bench. Yay. How much could you have lifted without your spotter helping you the entire time? We don't know. And so what is the point of setting a PR if the person's hands are on the bar? The last thing I want when going for a one rep max is somebody touching the bar. I don't even want them hovering near the bar. And so do not interrupt a one rep max by touching the bar, especially on the way down. You're there for an emergency. If the guy can't get it up, if the bar starts to go down, lift it up. Stand up. Easy, guys. Fucking hell. Yeah, Easy, guys. Is this a bounce it off of a springboard partner bench press challenge? What exactly PR did we see right now? 130 kilograms, easy. Well, if it was so easy, why don't you try it without bouncing it off some spring-loaded mechanism underneath the shirt? Now listen, if he is in fact trying to increase his one rep max for board press, that's fine. But he should be pausing the weight at the bottom. When you do touch and go bench presses with a heavy weight and you're bouncing it off the chest, that is a very likely situation where you could pull a pec. And even more often, this occurs with sloppy technique, when you're ego lifting. And so leave the ego at the door. Pause the weight on the chest. Sure, you'll be 10 or 20 pounds lighter than you could have got, but imagine saving yourself an injury. How much are you gonna lift after a pec tear? Stuff like this to help me, you know, maintain my body to make sure I don't get injured. And remember, he says, I'm just trying to maintain my body. I'm not trying to get huge. Boxers in particular, they don't want massively huge muscles. Many times they compete in certain weight classes and so adding a bunch of muscle could be a hindrance. But he does mention he wasn't training this heavy at the start of camp. He slowly worked his way up. And so perhaps the start of camp, he was using lighter weights for higher reps. And as the weeks progressed, he was trying to progressive overload. Unfortunately, people think that they can progressive overload every Every single week, every single workout, you need to get stronger, add more weight, add more reps. The body doesn't work like that. It can't always be at its peak. It can't always be getting better. There's certain workouts, certain days, you're just not going to feel it. And so you might not be able to get as many reps. It's okay. What you should be doing is going to the gym and focus on training harder than last time. You won't always be able to train harder. Some days you won't be able to push this hard. You'll feel overtrained, injured, whatever. You simply look at your last workout and try to do better. And if you don't, that's okay. You gave it your all. The next workout back, if you had a bad day, look at that last workout. Can I beat that? I had an off day last Monday. What am I going to do this week? I'm going to try to beat that off day. And if you do, great. You keep trying to progressive overload that way. If you always have in your mind you have to lift more weight or do more reps, well, what's going to happen is you're going to break form. Your ego, even subconsciously, is going to have you cheat the reps. You might swing more, bounce the weight more, not squat as deep. And so please, don't think you always need to get better and leave your ego at the door. It takes a lot more discipline to use the same weight or a lighter weight and lift with impeccable form, slow the reps down, increase time under tension, than it does to just bang out another rep. Using sloppy technique. Extra 20, just to make my life a little harder. And so on the chin-ups, those were not full range of motion. He's ego lifting yet again. Why are we adding a 20 pound chains on when you're already struggling with no weight? And so do you really need to do five reps on each side? Why is it so heavy? 
Why are we doing such slow reps? Last I checked, boxers are throwing hundreds of punches in a fight. Does it really matter how strong you are on one rep? Or does it matter more how often can you throw that punch? How fast can you recover? Can you throw 100 punches in a minute? Versus can you just throw one punch and you're done? For me, much more important to have explosive power, which is developed by using lighter weights for greater speeds, than it is to simply do one rep max. And he likes to finish off his workout with several sets of abs. And listen, the guy's a boxer. He needs to have very strong core. But if you're just lifting for hypertrophy, you don't need to train your abs every single workout. Will you train your chest, shoulders, back every workout? Probably not. And so there's no reason to train your abs more than any other body part. And so I see nothing wrong with him showing his workout. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but the guy's trying. He's clearly in amazing shape. I mean, check the guy out, strips down, flexes the abs. Look at the body. He's very confident, has an amazing physique, and I do believe he's natural, and it's working for him. Now, it's not perfect. I would prefer to not see him ego lift so much and lighten the weights a bit, but aside from that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with him doing this workout. And considering he's doing the weights in addition to all that cardio, well, the results speak for themselves. Now, if you're like him, what have an amazing physique, you're lifting weights and doing cardio, the stack I'd strongly recommend is Geo2 Max with Ecti Builder. Geo2 Max, best for your cardio and in recent human studies, randomized, double-blind, placebo-control studies, it showed significant increases in cardiovascular endurance. And with Ecti Builder, tens of thousands of people buying it, rebuying it, I use both of these products every single day. Absolutely amazing. And if you're interested, use code GREG 10% off, click the link in the description. And so let me know in the comment section, what do you think of this guy's workout? What about his physique? Do you guys think he's natural or do you think he's using PDs? Subscribe, click the bell button, like the video if you liked it, watch one of the bloops, follow me on Instagram, Greg, you said IP bro. Don't forget the cookbooks, the training books, the coaching plans by me and my team, phone consults, cameos, click the link in the description. And until next time, I am out.